About a 35 minute drive southwest of London is a tourist attraction that was once a royal palace. It is called Hampton Court. It was built over 500 years ago and was a favorite residence of Henry VIII. A couple of hundred years at, later, during George III's reign, the king who had problems with the American colonies, someone planted the shoot of a grapevine outside the palace. And that vine has grown and continued to grow for the past 250 years. It's been pampered and pruned for so long, the stem is now about 13, or the, yeah, the stem is about 13 feet in diameter, and some of its branches are over 120 feet long. Despite its age, the vine still produces 600 to 900 pounds of grapes each year. Some say it is the second oldest vine in the world, the oldest vine being 400 years old, and it is in Slovenia. Well, some people might say that, but I think you and I would beg to differ a little bit with them. There's another vine in the world, not of this world, but in this world, that is about eight times as old as the vine at Hampton Court and about five times as old as the one in Slovenia. And you may know already the vine I'm talking about. And that vine is what I want us to look at today. It's important for us to understand the life of a vine and its branches. I don't know if you've ever seen a grapevine up close, um, but being from British Columbia, I'm quite familiar with vineyards. They have them all over the place in BC, especially in the area where I come from. It all starts with a vine being planted in the ground, and from that vine, branches continue to grow, and, and when properly pruned, turn into magnificent bushes producing a whole lot of fruit. Throughout scripture, God refers to his people as being his vineyard. In Isaiah 5, God speaks through the prophet, and because of their sin, he is going to take the hedge down, he says, and the walls down, and he's going to remove his protection, and they will be devoured. Then in Isaiah 5 and verse 7, he says, For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are his pleasant planting. And so you see the reference there to, to vines and vineyard. And again in Isaiah 27 and 2 to 3, the prophet writes, In that day, and that is the day of redemption of his people, a pleasant vineyard, sing of it. I, I the Lord, am its keeper. Every moment I water it, lest someone should punish it, I keep it day and night. And so we see this idea of God's people being his vineyard. God has often spoke of his, of his people that way. John Gill in his commentary on the Gospel of John says that the Jews, when they were all looking for the Messiah to come, one of the, the names that was familiar at that time for Jesus and that people would refer to him as was the vine. They were looking for the vine. So it's not without reason that in John 15, Jesus introduces himself as the true vine. That vine that is over 2,000 years old and is still producing branches and fruit. And those branches reach around the world. So let's look at what Jesus has to say about himself and, and the Father and you and I as his disciples. When Jesus says that he is the true vine, he is literally saying he is the vine of truth, the vine that leads all others to the truth, the truth of God. He is the vine we must be connected to and that we must be rooted in if we indeed are going to live in the truth of God. In John 14 and 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to me, to the Father, except through me. This would mean that unless you are rooted in the vine, if you, unless you're a branch rooted in the vine, 
um, you can't come to the Father. Unless you are rooted in Jesus, you have not found the way to the Father and eternal life. And you are not abiding in the truth of God. And you are not going to get the Father in heaven, to the Father in heaven, because Jesus is the only way. You have to be rooted in the vine. Jesus is the true vine that God the Father planted, in which we must be rooted. Jesus said, unless you abide in me, and I abide in you, unless you are in me, rooted in me, unless you take up your dwelling place in me, you have nothing to do with the Father, and you will bear no fruit. Because he says in John 15, that apart from me, you can do nothing. I asked a person one time, or I was asked by a person one time, if I really believed that. And I'll tell you what, why in a minute. Does Jesus mean that you, can, you cannot do anything without him? If you think from a worldly perspective, of course I can do some things outside of Jesus in this world. I can do some things outside of Jesus in this world. There's, there's no doubt about that. But what is Jesus really saying? He's saying you cannot do anything concerning God, his truth, and eternal life without or apart from me. In other words, you cannot bear any kind of fruit acceptable to God unless you are connected to the vine that the Father has planted. You see, Jesus is the source of everything that is truth about God. He is everything that pertains to life and godliness, everything that is from God the Father and of God the Father, everything that pertains to the kingdom of life and eternity. It is like Isaiah says, in 64 and verse 6, we have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like polluted garment, like a polluted garment. If we are trying to do something and are not rooted in the vine, all it is is like polluted garments. There is no acceptable fruit there for the kingdom. And that's what Jesus is saying. Jesus explained it this way. He gave us a parable in Luke chapter 6, verse 46 to 49. And it gives us this idea about being rooted. It's the same idea as being rooted in the vine. The Vacation Bible School children love to sing this, this passage in a, in a song. Jesus says, the wise man builds his house upon a rock. He dug deep, laying the foundation on the rock, and the storms of life could not destroy the house. He says, on the other hand, the foolish man, he built his upon the ground without a foundation or the sand. When the storms of life assaulted and beat upon the house, it fell, and big was its fall. It could not withstand the storms of life. Well, the rock there represents Jesus, and the sand represents everything and anything else. The wise man was rooted in the vine, you might say. He built his house on Jesus, the true vine of life. And though Satan did all he could to make that not happen, he couldn't shake that he couldn't shake the wise man because he was rooted in the vine. Jesus Christ. He was, it was built on the rock. And I'm making the parallel there. That's why I'm doing this. People want to do good things in this world and build things, lasting things, memories, their name. They want to provide for their children and do all, all kinds of things. And those, some of those things are really good. But if they are not rooted in the vine... They will vanish. They will disappear. They will all have been done in vain, is what, is what Jesus is saying. Because whatever you do that's going to last has to be done based on you being rooted in the true vine. 
So in God's vineyard, the kingdom of his people, Jesus is the true vine, and we must be growing from that vine. We must be connected to that vine. And when that is the case with our lives, we have some things to look forward to. In John chapter 15, Jesus says something very interesting. He says, I am the true vine, but then he says something else. He says, and my father is the vine dresser. It literally means the one who has the care of the vineyard, whose office it is to mature the branches for the best opportunity for bearing fruit. It also means to provide the best atmosphere for the branches to grow in and to defend and protect the branches. And of course, the one who has a great interest in its growth and its welfare. He cares for it, like Isaiah said, day and night. Think about that. As you walk in this life serving God, he's doing all of this for you. He's there. He cares about you and your welfare and, and everything about you. God gave or appointed his son to be the source of all blessings to man. The branches, that is the branches, that all grace descends through him. And God takes care of those branches that come and root themselves in the vine of truth. That is Jesus Christ. Obey his plan of salvation and accept him as their Lord and Savior. So church, God is deeply interested and cares wholeheartedly for each one of us, that we should receive all his blessings for the express purpose of bearing fruit that is that he desires from our lives. Fruit for his kingdom. To that end, the vine dresser, as the caregiver of the vineyard, also has the task of making sure the branches are at their best for the best full fruit production. So he is the one that prunes the branches to get the most and the best out of them. In a vineyard, the vine will produce branches that are called sucker roots, or sucker shoots, sorry. Those shoots never bear fruit, but they are, they're flimsy, they, they never turn into branches, but what they're doing is they're sucking all the nutrients out of the vine. The extent of their being is to produce leaves. The gardener or the vine dressers cut these sucker shoots off because they are unproductive and rob the vine of its nurture. They also cut away any dead branches that have dried up for one reason or another because they just harbor insects and diseases and cause the vine to rot. But they also, the, the vine dresser also trims the live branches. He trims them so that the nurture of the vine doesn't just stay in the branch, but actually goes through the branch, which it's supposed to be doing, to produce fruit. So all of that the vine dresser does to take care of the vineyard. And someone that knows, a vine dresser that knows what they're doing, can, the vineyard is magnificent. And I can't think of a, a vine dresser better than God that knows exactly what he's doing with his vineyard. So if you apply that to Christians, there are some, maybe Christians in the church, that continually suck the life out of the church, always taking and never giving. That might be the case. You don't want to be that because the vine dresser is going to prune you off from the vine, from the vineyard. Um, there are those who are not satisfied um, with taking, but give and work all the time. Those are ones that the vine dresser likes in his vineyard. But there's all kinds of situations that are applications you can make to that, and I'll let your mind run wild with that a little bit. But the second thing the caregiver does is he creates the atmosphere 
for the vine and the branches to grow in harmony and produce abundant fruit. And I'm going to call that the church. That's what the church is supposed to be. Through his word, that is through Jesus Christ, God has given us instruction on everything that pertains to life and godliness. And I, asked, I was asked one time if I really believe that God gave us everything for every moment in our life. Because this was a person that didn't really believe in God. And I said yes. And then I said let me explain. If our life is lived by our desire and principles of this world. Then we are not living a life of godliness. We are living a worldly life. And we know the result of that is death and destruction. There's no positive outcome to that life end. However. God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness, meaning all things necessary for you and I to live a life of to live a life that glorifies God, that is right in his eyes, and to live a life to accomplish everything he wants us to accomplish, bearing the fruit that he wants us to bear in this life. He has given us everything for that. And so all the vineyard has to do is live a life of belief in him, repentance of sin, and walk in the light of it as he walks in the light of his in the kingdom of light. So Jesus is a true vine dresser, or is a true vine, and it is the vine that the vine dresser planted. And that is the vine that you and I want to be rooted in. The branches then, what do the branches have to do with all of this? Well, it seems to me that God does a lot of pruning from time to time in his vineyard. And much of that pruning takes place more often than not in times of difficulties. During the times of difficulty, some people split and run, while others bear down and continue to push forward, living their lives for Christ, come what may. So... um, Someone said something I didn't like, and so I, I, I'm, I don't have to put up with that stuff. I'm out of here. Or I've had enough of this. I don't need this hassle anymore. Or I don't know, make up any excuse that you want. Someone looked at me wrong this morning, so I'm not coming back to church. Or something like that. People make up all kinds of excuses. Really, you may want to look at that as maybe God doing some pruning. Because sometimes that happens. I read an article where the writer said that there are those who are satisfied with just being happy and content with the status quo. They are not truly attached to the true vine. They are not doers, they are pew warmers. And that's an expression, but he said those are usually the first ones that go in a time of crisis. So God just kind of lops them off and, and they're done. That may be the case for some, but God prunes his vineyard in other ways as well. He, can, he prunes his vineyard through all sorts of things as we go through life, things that happen to us. He will, if, if we handle a situation wrong and we go to him and we repent of that and we try to move forward, that's a pruning. He, he helps us get that right. He cuts off the bad and he keeps the new the, 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 the growth going. And then there are those branches that are alive. Have you ever heard of someone refer to someone as a live wire? Someone that's just on fire, that's driven, that's encouraging, motivating, and always busy doing the work? The branch that is alive, being pruned by God, Rooted and nurtured in the true vine, the living, living the life and sharing the gospel of Jesus with the lost, doing whatever it takes, whatever is needed done, and never misses a fellowship or a meeting with the saints when at all possible. This is a branch that's alive. That is a branch that God also prunes, but it is a branch that he is interested in, a branch that he prunes to make it even better. He, he, 
he helps that vine to grow and, and to be all it can be in producing fruit for the kingdom. He prunes it because it is alive and growing and there's, there's more opportunity for that vine in the future. It is a desired result of a branch rooted in Christ and pruned by God. That's what God wants. God makes that possible through his true vine that he planted. And so God expects his branches to be fruitful. Matthew 7 speaks of people being judged by their labors. God desires us to bear certain fruit and we must meet that expectation as a living branch in his vineyard. As Christians, there is much fruit that we can bear. And I'm sure that you can think of a whole lot more than I've listed, but I just listed a few. We can bear fruit to repentance, fruit in prayer, fruit of the Spirit in our lives, and you can look at all of those things, joy, peace, love, all of those things. The fruit that brings glory and honor to God, our vine dresser. Fruit that is sweet, that is aromatically pleasing to our Father in heaven. You know, we had a series at the beginning of this year where we talked about clothes in Christ. And we talked about a lot of this fruit, compassion, kindness, meekness, patience, forgiving each other. And all of that is fruit for the kingdom. The fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patient, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, all of those things. But then there's also fruit bearing by sharing the gospel and working with God to win souls back to the kingdom, back to the vineyard, to be new branches, to, to, to cultivate new branches in the vine. That's considered fruit as well. And so we're helping others to be fruit-bearing branches just as we are fruit-bearing branches rooted in the vine. And so how would you sum that all up? what Jesus says in John 15. Well, Jesus is the vine the Father planted for those who want to be branches. The branches, that is you and I, must be rooted in Jesus because there's no other way for us to produce God's righteousness in our lives. Jesus is the source of all blessings and of all things that pertain to life and godliness for those who desire that life. We will never achieve that fruit without abiding in him. God the Father is the vine dresser, the one that cares for the vineyard, that is, all, that is all of those who have been saved in Christ. God is interested in our success and our productivity in the vineyard and our well-being and our protection. And he's there for all of it. God is also pruning us so that we will be in peak condition spiritually to produce the most precious and purest fruit for his vineyard. He is the one that makes it all possible for us to even have a shot at being fruit-bearing branches. John the baptizer called out the hypocrites in his day when they came to him and, and, and were looking to be baptized so that they were looked okay in the people's eyes. And I'm paraphrasing here, but he said something like this. He said, you brood of vipers. Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit, keeping with repentance. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is hewn down and thrown into the fire. John says, it's about changing your ways and not putting on a show. It's about bearing fruit in the kingdom and not being deceitful about things. It's turning to God's way and to serving him. The words of Jesus recorded by his apostles as they were guided along by the Holy Spirit teach us how we can become rooted in that vine. It is one of the most simplest entry forms in history, in the history of the world. And yet so very hard for so many to accept because it takes a meek and humble heart. Believe in Jesus. Have faith in him. Repent of your sins. 
confess him as Lord and Savior, and be immersed, buried with him in baptism, washing away your sins and receiving the gift of life in Christ Jesus. And then strive to walk in the light as he is in the light, bearing fruit in the glorious and precious vineyard of God. Doesn't sound that difficult, does it? And yet people make it difficult. If you're not there at this time, why not choose now while you still can to accept that call of God and become part of become a branch in the true vine? If we can help you to do that in any way, let us know while we stand and sing. <laughs>